scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Your words and actions are profound indicators to your level of transformation, especially the quality of your thoughts, your words and your actions. When you find out that your words continue to betray your convictions or betray scripture, that tells you that there is something wrong. It may not be that there's something wrong with your spirit. You are genuinely saved. Now, believers, if you do not understand this, you will think and the devil will deceive you into believing that just because there is defeat at the solica realm, it has affected your salvation. No, your spirit is saved. The problem is not from the spirit. Are we together? The problem is that number one, you have not trained your will to make pro-kingdom choices, word compliant choices. You have not gained by the spirit dominance over your emotions. Are we together? And you have not trained your thoughts to be word compliant. So your words and your actions continue to show like you are not saved. The condition for salvation and encounter with Jesus is not anything you do on your own part. You just receive into your spirit by faith, believing the gospel and receiving. But when it comes to the mental realm, you don't just receive. There is an active participation. And the salvation of the spirit happens in a moment. The moment you believe Jesus as Lord and Savior, whether you feel like it, whether you look like it, whether you look qualified or not, the Bible tells us that the moment you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his substitutionary sacrifice, salvation, new birth is imputed into your spirit. Are we together? But the salvation of the soul is a process. It is an active, continual participation your mind actively participating with the word your mind actively participating with the spirit so you can see someone who you saw him make that altar call and you saw him give his life to jesus genuinely but there is nothing around the products that are coming out of his life through his words are we together and through his actions keep betraying his conviction and you meet the person and say what is wrong with you and you say i believe in jesus what else do I need to do? It is because they have not known that salvation is supposed to pour in from the realm of the spirit to now begin to affect the mind realm. The quality of what happened to your spirit is known when it starts affecting your mind. That is when the fruits of righteousness begins to show forth. Because you see the body, which is the last part of our tripartite nature, the body is simply an instrument of execution. Please look up. The body does not have any intrinsic energy or power to make any decisions on its own. The reason why your body looks alive is because your soul is in your body. When you detach your soul from your body, in that instant, the body will drop on the ground. Am I right on that? Everybody here has seen someone die before, during, or after. Am I right on that? And you can look at a lifeless body. It does not matter whether the body is a macho body, a lean body that has depreciated through sickness, no matter the level of the health in that body. Once the soul detaches from the body, the body lies lifeless. So when this body moves the wrong way, it is not the body moving on its own. The body is simply an instrument that gives your transformation or otherwise expression in the physical realm. Is someone learning that now? 
when a man winds his hand and slaps the wife don't blame the hand the hand is simply executing the content of his mind that means he has not gained dominance over his what emotions you're good students you should even be able to tell me what part of the mind of that man has not yet experienced salvation the moment you see yourself making wrong choices that lead you to destruction the will as a part of your mind is yet to experience the moment you see that your emotions are swaying you from pillar to post it means you have not through the word of god gained dominance over your emotions hmm. are we together this is what you call maturity maturity is simply a physical or psychological way to show that by whatever means largely spiritual an individual has been able to tame his mind to bring that mind to a level of appreciable obedience so you say this man is matured what makes him matured in your eyes he um first corinthians 13 and verse 11 gives us the clearest index for maturity in the kingdom first corinthians 13 11 media help us when i was a child i speak you're speaking like a child i understood like a child i thought like a child but when i became a man i put away childish things so when you say an individual is very matured you're not necessarily saying it in terms of the level of development of his body that may apply but largely that is not maturity actually comes from the realm of the soul the realm of the mind because you can find an adult foolish person am i right on that you know that this man is not young in terms of chronological passage of age but you do not see the decisions that justify that maturity so for instance you can find a man 45 years old but you see his will through his choices the deficiency of a transformed will the choices continue to lead him to perdition number two you see childishness at work in an adult body because there is no mastery over emotions mastery over emotions is one of the clearest indices of maturity when you see a little child the child does not have control the child does not have discipline are we together whatever the child wants he does it or tries to do it he can carry a bottle of glass and just play with it and smash it on the ground and it's not even there is no sense of consequence the baby can carry a document for a business worth two million dollars and eat it with joy while he's tearing it into pieces it takes an adult who is mature to come and say you have destroyed potential for even your own schooling and your own growth but as far as the child is concerned his emotions are without boundaries because that age being that he's bankrupt of maturity and development he's given the liberty to explore any and all possibilities now when that happens to an adult it tells that something is wrong with you because you have not allowed the word of god to help you gain dominance don't forget what we are discussing the mentality of a victor and then your body is a helpless instrument of execution if your body begins to lead you to a path of victory a path of grace a path of excellence well, you clap for it, but the body had no choice. Are we together now? Do you wake a dead body and say, stand up and leave the mortuary and go? If it's resurrection, that's a different thing. But under normal circumstances, that body, even if it's a professor's body, you cannot ask the body, okay, you are dead. But remember, you study. So who was the professor? It was not the body. What made an individual suddenly become a professor? When you say someone is a general in the army and he dies, do you wake the, do you call the dead body a general? Do you call the dead body a CEO? Talk to me. Do you call the dead body a pastor? The dead body is simply a dead body. Do you distinguish male and female dead bodies? Do you now say, no, no, don't put a female dead body here. It's not safe for them. They are all dead. So the idea of, say, you, you get what I'm saying now? Yes. Our focus largely is on the body but then the realm of the spirit the gospel really must penetrate your mind and do something to your will choices are we together now 
emotions and then your thoughts where the intellect comes if that does not happen to you your life may never capture the essence of salvation listen this is why many born again believers are frustrated they are frustrated with church they are frustrated with their lives because the expectation they had over salvation was that magically salvation will rest upon their spirit and for some reason they will sleep and wake up with their minds and brains intellect reset automatically and unfortunately, if you do not have the privilege of sitting under a teaching priest to dissect this and open you up, you may be saved. And your only consolation is that you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ after this life. But as far as excelling is concerned, you may find out that your life may never command victory. And this is also the reason why many people do not fulfill their God-ordained destiny. Why would God come and meet a young boy called Jeremiah in chapter 1 and verse 5? And he was speaking to a small boy. Look at everything he was telling him. Before thou camest forth, I sanctified thee. I ordained you to be a prophet. Who was he saying would be a prophet? Was it the body? No. No. Hallelujah. That is the reason why... Elijah was called Elijah. John the Baptist was also called Elijah. Their bodies were not the same. He said that John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Is someone learning now? This is very, very important. Write this down. Your body, let me talk at least about your body. I'm not neglecting the thing. Your body is the final revealer of the quality. The, your body is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your mind. That means your body, it is in the physical realm. And through your body, the quality of your spirit man, the quality of your mindset, the quality of your transformation is ultimately revealed through your body or the physical realm, if you want to put it that way. Now, please look up. The reason why there is such emphasis on the body is because the body is the final revealer. Let me give you an instance. So, here is a gentleman coming from a village what do you call poverty poverty we know largely is the mind but there are indices physical indices that show the person is poor are we together insufficiency the body is most likely not in a health condition that is desirable now a few years later that gentleman becomes buoyant financially you now say the person is wealthy what exactly changed the mind changed but to a layman you do not know that the miracle happened here what he uses to know that the person's life has changed is now the presence of a car am i right the presence of a house maybe the presence of what you call a good life so the body is very important because it is the final revealer of the quality of your spirit and the quality of your transformation eventually we should see the god life flowing to your body through your health through the quality of your life and everything physical that is around you so it starts from the spirit it flows to your mind but then it should happen in your body and i hope you know that the final salvation of the body will happen at the resurrection that's what the bible teaches where mortality will swallow up immortality and the reason why that will happen is not because it was the will of god that that is the final time it will happen that our rate of transformation is largely too slow a man's lifetime becomes so small for mortality to swallow up immortality but that that possibility is here and now that men can attain to that state where their body does not die it's in scripture Jesus looks at the disciples and said, not all of you will taste death. And they were angry. Say, what does that mean? So who is the person? Let's know who will be alive now and who will die. And Jesus just shot the issue quietly. But it's true. A few people came close to it uh, in the Bible, even though they later died. Chiefest among them in the New Testament was John the Beloved. He was the final apostle who nobody could. He died a natural death. He could not. He literally 
dominated over martyrdom. It's not that they did not try. Bible history will tell us, are we together now? That they tried to do every kind of thing that they could do. They poured, they put him inside hot oil, put him inside whatever. He came out of the oil. Imagine you are trying to roast fish or fry fish and you put it inside oil and it comes out without dying. Or without, um, without frying. Would you run away? Immortality. That man's body had been so transformed. Something about the reality of the spirit life had gained dominance that the elemental forces had no power over him again. They did not know what to do with him. When a man refuses to die, there's nothing you can do again. Are we together? Because the last enemy to be destroyed in the world of men in experience is death. Every man can be immune to any other thing, but the moment you conquer death, nothing can be done. That is why the boldest man on earth is the man who does not fear death. The boldest man on earth is not the one who fights lions. and fight. Once you cannot fear death, there is nothing men can do with you again. Why do we salute military people? Because by reason of their training, they have been trained to see death as a passage. And so they will boldly step into all kinds of camps of the enemy and shoot you go and try it i know you're a christian you, are, you can go with your bible even go with a bottle of oil are we together the hearts of men fail them when they're about to dare death is the reason why the zenith of jesus's victory was his his victory over the grave death over satan over sin all of these elements when he rose again is the reason why if you do not believe in the resurrection you've not believed in the complete gospel it was a, it was largely the problem between the sadducees and the pharisees the dividing line was the reality of the resurrection is someone learning of these three dimensions i wrote here the most important as far as your excelling in the earth is concerned is your mind please write of these three dimensions spirit soul and body the most important as far as your excelling on the earth is concerned is your mind this is very important first corinthians chapter 6 let's read 19 and 20 using amplified first corinthians 6 19 and 20 it says do you not know that your body, watch this, is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? It says, whom you have received as a gift from God. You are not your own. Verse 20. It says you were bought with a price, purchased with a precious, with preciousness and paid for. It says, so then honor God, bring glory to him in your body. My apologies, I'm reading on the body. Still write that scripture for body. Add that scripture for body. I wrote it to buttress on the value of your body. So back to our discussion of these three dimensions, the most important is your mind. That means the most important aspect of your salvation after the initial salvation to your spirit is renewal and transformation. Please write it down. Renewal and transformation. Renewal and transformation. Your mind is very, very important. Listen to me. Your decisions and your actions are products of your level of renewal and transformation. Your decisions and your actions, and I'll be talking a bit about that. Your decisions and your actions are products or dependent on your level of renewal and level of transformation. If you're with me, say amen. That means making decisions and actions is not the issue. The issue is the lens and the basis. If your decisions and your actions are coming from a mind that is not renewed, a mind that is not transformed, your decisions and actions will consistently lead you against the will of God, lead you to a life of defeat. Are we together? You will be reading a lot of scriptures that attest to the fact that the believer is a victor in Christ. The believer has been called to a life of victory. 
but you may never enter the experience of it not because you are not acting not because you are not making decisions but your decisions are very inferior thanks to the lack of transformation within your mind are we together now so what makes a great preacher yes the anointing comes upon the person but what makes a great preacher is your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great businessman your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great father a great mother it's not your tribe it's not where you come from it is your level of renewal and transformation what makes a great career person your level of renewal and transformation are we together now so what then by this definition if you are god forbid if you are an evil spirit what part of a man's life would you be interested in talk to me one more time excellent students your mind if you are the devil and you cannot do anything about the spirit of that man the next part of call it will be a waste to waste your time around the body knowing that the body is simply an executor are we together decisions are not made bodily the act is the body is only an instrument of execution so when satan comes to the believer the first thing he does is to make sure that he builds a system around your will your emotions and your thoughts your intellect to make sure that the word of god does not gain room there to transform you this is what is responsible for patterns and this is also the activity of spirits that you call familiar spirits it is not that they are so powerful but they have mastered these dynamics so they have lived with a people and lived around a geography for a long time and the moment a child is born they put in that software so you find out that people within a region behave in a certain way because the spirits are mandated to produce through your mind it's like an architectural blueprint if i have a, a drawing from an architect how many of you know i can reproduce this beautiful auditorium anywhere in the world do i need to carry the physical building no all i need is a plan so these spirits now your son is born the plan comes upon him your daughter is born your plan comes eventually you will find out that all the people who are tied to a region behave in a certain way this is where it is it is the reason why when jesus was born they looked at him and said can anything good come out of nazareth in other words we know nazarene there's nazarenes there's no longevity of impact look at the nazarene called samson he didn't last he went up and came down and jesus did not blame them he looked at nathaniel and he said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile only that something began to happen to that jesus he was born of mary fathered by joseph are we together but he refused to learn their ways the bible says at age 12 is it not in your bible why would the word incarnate what will he go and be doing in the temple i thought he would have just waited until his time of appearing but the bible says at age 12 he took responsibility knowing this that i've told you as god there is no record of god learning because god does not learn he is omniscient he knows all things but when the word God became a man, he had to do something to his mind. Your Jesus at age 12, when his colleagues were running around and exploring teenage, he was in church, the house of God, learning under doctors. He was searching for the things that pertain unto him. How do you think he got to know where it was written concerning him? By the time he gets to 30 and he's baptized, ready for ministry, the Bible says he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah. And with precision, he went to the place where it was written concerning him and he read the Messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. You find this in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. And the Bible says... He began to quote verse 18 now the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me and all of that when he was done 19 says he closed the book are we together now when he was done he closed the book he gave it to them the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them in the synagogue was fastened upon him and then one of the synoptic accounts who now began to uh, begin to tell them that that he asked somebody who had a withered hand remember and he says stretch forth your hands luke's account will say that their eyes were fastened on him and he told them 
this today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears in other words i am the manifestation of this that has been written but the whole work of jesus was done here so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind give it to us be in you which was also in christ jesus clearly you see that the mindset jesus had that made him a victor did not come from mary the mindset that made him a victor did not come from joseph the mindset came from the word he justified that he was the son of god by submitting himself to the word when satan came he didn't say mary said when satan came he didn't say joseph said he said it is written how did he know what it was written by opening the book and studying what is written there if you're with me shout a loud amen, amen. hallelujah very very important now many believers look up please many believers desire to actualize destiny many des believers desire to live excelling lives but most do not understand that salvation needs to pour in please listen to me from your spirit man to the realm of the mind you will never excel in ministry if salvation does not affect this second realm you will never excel in life no matter how much prayer is prayed upon you listen the realm of attacks and curses the realm of all the strengthener of yokes and curses foundations and all of that is the realm of the mind and because satan knows that most believers Believers are not prepared to have the understanding that brings liberty he will create theologies that can believers to be defeated forever in spite of all that Christ has done you would think because Jesus contended for transformation Satan will leave him he still came to test the whole temptation was a test of his level of transformation do you know that the whole temptation if you are the son of God turn these stones to bread watch emotional intelligence jesus would have gotten angry and said you don't know me you are playing with my power i will not only turn the stone to bread we will eat it together i will make sure you eat it as that's what most of us would have done but look at the way the word of god had gained dominance over his emotions there was no need to prove any point he said it is written are you learning now yes then a test comes again and he took him to a holy city and said fall down a pinnacle of the temple and he said fall down for it is written satan now he said you are not the only one who knows scripture he shall keep his chain angels charge over thee and in their hands they will bear you lest at any time you would dash your foot against the stone who is quoting that scripture seven what would you have done if you were Jesus? Jesus said it is written, thou shalt not tempt. So even though he used scripture, it was still temptation. Thou shalt not tempt. Look at, look at the control that happened within the solical realm. The word of God had worked on Jesus. And then number three, the Bible now says he led him to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them in a moment. And he said, all these things I will give you if thou will fall down and worship me. Verse 10, Jesus said unto him, get the hands, hallelujah. Do you know what it means to see all the glories in a moment? He was so detached to it. You know the level of control and transformation it takes to see money. Remember money. Money and titles and prestige and pedigree and all of these things. And Jesus says, if that is what you want to use against me, you are wasting your time. I am so obsessed about the will of God. It is not about my agenda. All of those things can fade away. And Satan was frustrated. Therein lies the key to frustrating Satan. Every time a man wants to frustrate Satan, saying, Satan, go away is foolishness. I'm tired of you. It's not wisdom. That's not how you say it. 
you fortify the mental realm such that all his wiles and frustrations become null and void he does not know what to do with you because if he uses hunger and your individualism you have risen against it turn this stone to bread you are a man of God you have the power to do whatever I can organize the conference it is within my power but I will only do what is consistent with the will of God that is you are managing yourself do you know they say power without control is nothing there are many people who cannot receive power from God not because there is anything wrong with their spirit God looks at you from a solical realm and there is such deficiency of transformation it is a risk to empower you do you know what it means to be a multi-millionaire to be a billionaire and yet be temperate and be modest look at the man called Moses the Bible calls him the meekest man he was not meek just because he was a stammerer. Most people feel that he was an angry man. You try to become a leader over 2.5 million people and see if you will last one week. Are we together? Control. If you had the power to strike somebody dead and the person looks at you and insults you, ah, you will kill that person immediately. As a lesson for them, like Elijah. And Jesus says, no, do you not know what spirit you are of? Are we together? Yes. There was a man in the Bible who aborted the opportunity to become a prophet. Most likely a double-fold career of Elijah's anointing. His name was Gehazi. Look at me. Did you ever read that any spirit came to speak to Gehazi? It was because of the bankruptcy of light from the solical realm. He was looking at that means his purpose for even walking with Elisha was corrupted. Are we together? And corruption is from the realm of the mind. The Bible now says when Naaman saw that he was healed, he said, no, I need to bring something to honor the prophet. Elisha said, no, 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 that's fine. You go. Gehazi was angry. He said, you mean you will let this thing go like this? This opportunity? Which leper will come again for us to heal to get this kind of thing? This man is a wicked man. He's enjoying and I'm here as his boy. Here is my opportunity to shine. Look at the mismanagement of emotions. I'm saying this because for many of you, God is already showing you the reason why you keep praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. And God says, it's not that the power cannot come. It's not that I cannot make you a captain over many. The level of transformation, you would destroy people, destroy your own self. When you are given the power to heal the sick and the power to prophesy to people and your house rent is your house expires your house rent expires and you can prophesy to a millionaire in a moment with accuracy you have one billion three hundred and seventy seven thousand and and a lot of two hundred million just came and it's true will you ask for rent or will you ask for a new house And because of the correctness of your prophecy, I'm not being sarcastic. Who will know? So God must work on you. Most believers focus on the spirit man that is already saved. And they just feel that all it takes. And you see, we do not contend for the things that really matter. The Bible uses Jesus as a model to teach us for, for a period of 18 years from 12 until he was 30 he submitted himself to knowledge watch how jesus turned ordinary disciples to apostles look at the ratio of teaching he called them you are a fisherman come you have tendencies for whatever come when he brought all of them together he said ladies and gentlemen now listen to me you are going to be listening to me lecture after lecture after lecture if you watch jesus it will look like he was not serious with his assignment because all he was doing was teaching other people. A man who came to die to impart salvation. He was not concerned about his death. He was concerned about people who would succeed him. His death would only happen in 72 hours and it was over. But the men who would carry that message. Do you know if Jesus died properly and resurrected and there was no succession. The gospel would not reach you today. To the point that when Jesus resurrected. When he returned back from that coronation service in heaven, the disciples saw him and they were happy. Instead of putting a party together to dance, he said, listen, listen, 
in 50 days the Holy Ghost is going to come the dispensation of the Holy Spirit will start Jesus acknowledged that there were some lectures he had not finished he said there's no time for celebration now get back to class and in Acts chapter 1 he started teaching them the things that pertain to the kingdom 40 days when it was done he said all right I'm ready to leave the Holy Spirit will come and take it from there and the men stood knowledge they did not know what to do levitated to heaven and then Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when the day of Pentecost was fully come watch this what made the day full do you know what fully come means the time was matured for his arrival it was not just because it was the day of Pentecost Jesus there was a condition the people had to become for the Holy Ghost to rest on them if on the day of Pentecost the people had not been transformed to a level the Holy Ghost will not be able to rest on them so you you saw a sense of urgency in Jesus it was not the issue of anointing it was the issue of renewal transformation and then the Holy Ghost came on them and look at the first message from a man who had submitted to transformation this is that and the guy began to speak intelligently articulating the gospel the same man who a few days ago ran away Jesus began to put certain things in place now the Holy Ghost came and the one you call Peter the fearful had now become Peter the Apostle the chiefest of them hallelujah I learned this and my life changed forever that most believers do not know that God is counting on them that the one factor that is responsible for your rising and your excelling your ability to represent the purposes of God you're a man of God here listen to me you're a businessman here listen to me you want God to do mighty things with you in this end time listen to me it is not just wishing that an anointing and a mantle comes upon you there is a state you must assume there is a level to which the salvation is ministered to your soul a level of dexterity and health at a solical level that is what will qualify you to receive certain precious mantles and certain precious graces are we together when you study i'm a student of revival by the grace of god i have studied revivals across continent i've studied the history of the church in nigeria with a view to finding out what went well and what went wrong i have a dear friend who wrote an article about the church in nigeria i have a book that was written i have visited a few sites where revival broke out in nigeria and i asked a few questions for the grandchildren um, great grandchildren of some of the revivalists whether in the east whether in the south 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 down to Boni, people like Samuel Ajayi Crowder Joseph Johnson I've had the honor to touch the chair to sit down on some of the chairs that they sat on to stand on the pulpits that they preach so I'm not just talking to you about cunningly devised fables I can tell you in my study I have discovered that it was never the deficiency of power it was never the deficiency of gifts it was the deficiency of renewal and transformation that every time the spirit of revival is about to come god will mandate that there is a requisite level of renewal that the vessels that will be used must attain unto but if the people are not transformed god will have to make do with the state of the vessels as at the point that prophecy releases revival are we together now and so you will find very 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 um very weak vessels but they are carrying precious mandates and they do not last because while the revival is on for those who their emotions have not been dominated by the word of god things like anger things like all of these attributes can just destroy you read through the generals most of these people it was the weakness of the flesh and the human nature the absence of transformation now we have a generation that wants to be victorious we are trusting that the end time revival that mantle will come upon us but most of the vessels all we are doing is just waiting and looking and saying lord well when will it come and god is saying you are about to make the mistakes that were made in the 60s and the 70s why do you think john the baptist was locked up in the wilderness unfortunately John the Baptist did not have any known opportunity 
to be mentored in scripture the bible does not reveal that to us the deficiency of his transformation is what took his life it was not herod he was angry there were offense all kinds of things there the man who ordained jesus the problem was not spirit or anointing this man was anointed of the spirit from the womb but he was angry and offended and he said go and tell jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another that means you can be a great man of god carrying a prophetic grace but because of emotional the word of god has not dominated your emotions watch this the word of god has not dominated your thoughts you will find yourself doing foolish things in spite of the anointing on you and now you are wondering what in the world is wrong with me how could you be so anointed and then the solica realm your emotions haywire you can boil like somebody who is angry and insult everybody and then you are boiling you are still anointed even while you are boiling and people look at you with fear like elijah and say where is this guy coming from elijah was transformed but elijah is not the best model of who the christian should be because there were many things about elijah's life that jesus corrected one of it was his anger read your bible when jesus came and was vetting through elijah it was clear the people said look this man is our model and jesus said no i've come with a superior template elijah was anointed but that man was angry moses was meek but moses was angry that means the moment you want to become a great leader among the many things you must deal with is anger because anger is the cancer of leaders justifiably so because dealing with people is a very you can abort destiny using justifiable anger it says in your anger do not sin do not let the sun go down while you are still angry it does not come by impartation there is a level of transformation and renewal hallelujah yes most believers are not able to rise because the requisite belief system please listen to me the requisite do you know there are levels of the anointing that god has brought me into today i prayed and fasted for those levels years ago and they did not come the problem was not my prayer i prayed correctly the problem was not my fasting i fasted correctly i tell you what went wrong what went wrong was that as a vessel my level of renewal and my level of transformation has not attained the state where it becomes justifiable for that level of grace to rest hallelujah there are people who pray and say father i'm a kingdom financier give me one billion and god tests them with 10 million the day they see it in the account what did he give them 10 million and with that 10 million they are confused they become a risk to themselves because that money suddenly arrived they make bad decisions listen to me you know the level of transformation and renewal that you have in the presence of opportunities if opportunities have not presented themselves before you it is difficult for you to think you are renewed or transformed can you see good things and say no to it because it is not the will of God has your will submitted to God that much an opportunity to go abroad for instance an opportunity to get whatever it is an opportunity to have a good life but God tells you this is inconsistent with my blueprint for you do you have the spirituality the maturity and the level of renewal to say yes or no how about your emotions what do you do when your wife gets angry and insults you or when your husband gets angry and insults you or when members get angry and insult you or when social media or whatever it is the pressure to want to prove a point aha uh -huh. there is no growth and there is no maturity your emotions swing from left to right people can literally program you using the deficiency of your emotions they can make you do certain things and make you say certain things Are we together now and then how about the dexterity of your thoughts the quality of your thoughts your intellect do you understand the laws of the spirit do you understand the laws of the kingdom or are you hoping that I will just be successful no it does not work like that what do you know about God what do you know about Satan what do you know about failure what do you know about success what do you know about spirituality? 
What do you know about demons? What do you know about angels? What do you know about righteousness? What do you know about the victory that is in Christ? What do you know about challenges? What do you know about relationships? These are the things that frame your understanding at a thought realm. Is someone listening to me? So you can see in truth that many of the confessions we make are will be great. I know that is psychologically consoling, but from the lens of honesty, many people will not be great. Now, they are far from it because there is no superstition around it. It is a labor in the spirit to obtain superior transformation. A CEO is not a body wearing a suit. A CEO is a mindset that has been transformed. Are we together? Perhaps in this case, the thought realm. Now, I want you to lay your hands on your head. After praying, we are going to get into a serious phase of mind transformation right now. Someone's mind is about to change. I'm about to share a few thoughts with you. Please lay your hands generously on your head and pray. Pray crying from the depth of your heart. As you are praying, I want you to see all the destinies that are connected to you. If you are a man of God here, see all the destinies that have been praying for your manifestation. In the name of Jesus, a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A man of God like never before, an end time warrior like never before, a kingdom financier like never before, through the excellency of my renewal, the excellency of my transformation, something is about to happen to your mentality. I like you to pray, open up your spirit and decree and declare that the former me is about to leave for the new me to come. The former man of God is about to leave for a new one to come. The failure is leaving, the victor is coming. The defeated one is leaving, the victor is coming. The one who is under the yokes of demons and curses is about to leave through the excellency of my renewal. Go ahead and pray. Kaparus katebash, ebrakata pakatos katafrakata belaketos, emprakata pakata katos katafrakate, lish kaparekata parus kiata, emprakata parika toskiata. Prophecy is about to happen in my life. Prophecy is about to happen to my life. I came to church tonight for my transformation. I came to church tonight for my rising. Finally, I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the anointing to rest upon my life. I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the blueprint of my prophetic destiny to begin to work. Pray one more minute. Oh, the failure is living, living right now, no matter how long it has been there. The defeated one is living for the victor to manifest. In Jesus' name I pray. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every Please sit down, fasten your seat belt, and let me give you the belief systems for victory. The mentality of a victor. Be ready to write. Number one, the first belief system that you must adopt to walk in victory. The first belief system is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Please write. Let's hurry up. We have a lot to cover up and God will grant us grace. Belief system number one that turns any believer to a sign and a wonder is an understanding 
of your positional advantage in Christ. Knowing that Jesus died for you is not enough. You must understand the implication of his death, his burial, his resurrection. For therein lies your victory as a believer. Ephesians 2, 4 and 6. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. It says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. Everybody say together with Christ. One more time. Say together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved, verse 6, and hath raised us up together. The key word is together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. The consciousness of your positional advantage. And Ephesians 1 from verse 20 to 23 tells us the implication of being in that position. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21. Far above. Let's list them. Number one, principality. Number two, power. Number three, might. Number four, dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come 22 it says and hath put all things under his feet say all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church 23 which is his body the church is his body every authority that was given to the head was also given to the body. The Bible says the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Say your positional advantage. It's a revelation and it's a consciousness that must come upon you that although you walk in the earth, the Bible says you have been exalted. There is a seat of authority that where Jesus sat in victory, that is where you sit. Now, it's not just Pentecostal gibberish. The Bible says it and let God be true and all men liars. It is not when you are translated and you experience a great life that you believe it. It is believing it that transits you. This reality is not a physical reality. It is first a spiritual reality. At the point of believing this, nothing in your life will show like this is true. But your assignment is to believe it. I'm sharing with you my mentality. A position advantage. The will cut a far above mentality. A far above mentality far above mentality you exempt yourself from the wickedness the vicissitudes of life that you know that i am victorious regardless what happens i am victorious belief system number one is an understanding of your positional advantage in christ can we continue number two the second belief system that programs victory in the believer's life is the consciousness of your oneness with Christ the consciousness of your oneness with Christ please write it first Corinthians 6 and verse 17 NIV we read that already it says that he that is in union with Christ first Corinthians 6 17 it says that he is one spirit with him he who unites himself with the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give us amplified of Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Look at what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. You are united with him. Whatever flows from him flows to you and through you to your world. You are united with him. The consciousness of your oneness. Listen, how do you stand and make declarations? These are your hands. The same hands you had as a baby. What suddenly changed in the hands that you lay it on someone and then the person gets healed? What changed? It is a consciousness. What changed the same mouth 
that you used to take breast milk as a baby the same mouth that you used to eat all your life the same mouth you used to look for trouble with what suddenly changed that you make a declaration in the name of jesus let doors be open and people say amen and return with testimonies what changed the same brain that you have that you went to class you forgot a lot of things now you can stand and then be telling someone something about his life when you were not there what changed the consciousness of your oneness the consciousness the bible says you are hidden with christ and christ in god now it's a process to get that consciousness to be crystallized but that you are responsible for beginning that journey you must plant that consciousness in you hallelujah is someone listening the victor's mindset number two the consciousness of your oneness your oneness with christ your oneness with christ everything that answers to jesus must answer to me in the name of jesus jesus went to every land and there was a structure for him to rise so it will be with me jesus said as i was or as i am he said that so are you now so are you now as he was as he walked upon the earth he says so are you can you imagine that you watch the life of jesus and see the dexterity the excellence that emanated from his life and yet many believers who claim to be one with him were not manifesting the possibilities that come with that oneness not because the statement is untrue but because we have not established that consciousness number three what is the third belief system for victory in the kingdom? Are you ready? Your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, philosophies, and ideas. Let me take it again. Your life, this is the third mindset you must have. That your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Your life will eventually, ladies and gentlemen, be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. That means the quality of your life, or otherwise, first from a spiritual standpoint, then spilling over to every area of your life, will be a merciless reflection of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas something about god you do not know can make you live a defeated life something about satan you do not know can make you live a defeated life something about men you do not know can make you live a defeated life your life is not just dependent on your job your life is not just dependent on government your life is not just dependent on relatives or situations and circumstances many of us are blaming the wrong things the real factor that controls the quality of your life, believe me, is your beliefs, your philosophies, your ideas. Is someone learning? Number four. Are you ready for the fourth belief system? Without consistent decisions and actions, comma, without consistent decisions and actions, comma, life and destiny remains stagnant without consistent decisions and actions please if you're writing underline decisions underline actions without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remains stagnant that means your pace in life is at the mercy of the consistency of your decisions and your actions great decisions great actions and then great actualization of destiny no decision no action and your destiny remains deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 and 20 without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remain stagnant how true and powerful this is i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death is that in your bible i have set before you blessing and cursing therefore 
Choose life, not wish life. Choose life that both you and thy seed may live. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. This is the implication of choosing life. That thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. And that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Please listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, one day ego better is not a wise approach to life. My life and your life today is a product of your decisions. A decision is not a wish. A wish is a blind desire. A decision is an intentional wish backed up by the willingness to pay whatever price to make it happen. So there is a difference between a wish. Many people are wishing, not deciding. I wish to move from here to here. That is a wish. I decide to move from here to here means one, I have placed that desire. But together with that desire, I am willing to pay whatever price in righteousness to get there. I want the anointing. That is a wish. I want to know scripture. That is a wish. I want to be a great man. That is a wish. Those are not decisions until you include the responsibility factor in your desires they are still wishes and many believers respectfully speaking preachers politicians people aspiring to be great it does not matter what kind of prophecy is on your head if you do not sustain the discipline to decide and then to act so if i have two people here one is wishing for a great life I wish I will be great. In fact, I desire greatness. I desire power. I desire to be mightily used by God. Another person right from his or her lowly estate is making that decision. And then the person now takes a step further to honor that decision. There is always action that must honor your decisions for destiny to move. Are we together? I like the way this man is playing his keyboard. I like the way this man is playing his drum. That is a desire. I'm sure one day I'll become like the drummer. You are, you are just wishing. The day you decide to be a drummer, you say, I have decided. What does it take? And the easiest way is to meet those who are already in, they are living the reality of your desire. Sir, what did you do to get this? He will tell you, are you ready? Okay, there is a school. Then you submit yourself to it. Are we together? Someone says, I want power. Okay. You've been saying it from 2018, 2019. Oh, more power. 2020, more power. Someone will say, honestly, I desire power because the power is required to actualize destiny and to birth the purposes of God in the lives of people and the person goes to find out how what are the keys that control genuine power when that person becomes empowered the talkative is still there wishing there are many people who want to be rich I want to be rich <laughs> no another person will sit down and get tired and say i'm tired of stagnation and the limitations that come from it in the name of jesus the bible gives me the, all the allowance to attain unto wealth and abundance what does it take that person will get up and make a decision let me show you how destiny moves from this day i decide that i will not sleep until i spend at least one hour every day studying a book on wealth and abundance following a program that helps me that is someone who has decided someone who wants to become a great man of God I will I will not rest until I spend one day at least praying for one or two hours one hour studying videos and scripture it may not look like all the time but the person has started let me tell you the one who will become the one who is taking action destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy let me repeat destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy that means if nobody ever has a chance to prophesy to your life but you can take the prophecy of scripture and believe it and make decisions out of it and act i guarantee you no power in existence will stop you from manifesting versus somebody who says amen and even places oil on your head and you go back and not act 
this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. A good warfare. Someone met me and said, one of the father of faith laid hands on me. And from that day, my life never became the same. He was just communicating his observation. I looked at him. I said, you are right. But you need to go and see what I did with that laying on of hands. Don't you think that I just jumped and said, oh, hands have come upon me. No! You go back and do something with it. Hallelujah. Apostle God is prospering koinonia, growing in leaps and bounds. I agree. But you go back and see the back end of what happens. You know how much time it takes to prepare what you are hearing now? The kind of research. I hope you know that it's not just scripture that brings this information. You are going to consult references with intelligence. It takes time. It's not like there is a book that has all the ideas for you. You piece them together by sitting down. When others are sleeping, you are awake and God is honoring the actions and moving your destiny forward. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare that from today, I make quality decisions and I take quality actions. There are many of you here, I will build, I will build, I will build. You said that when land was 10 million and you had 30 million in your account, I will build. While you were saying that somebody was in 100 level, the person finished and took a step of faith. He said, all I have is 1 million. I will go and meet the owner of the estate and say in the name of Jesus, show me favor. Who will experience favor of the two? And he meets that man and he says, you're a young man. You seem to be very ambitious. Okay, come, I will help you. Take half plot of land and the person laughs whereas the person who does not have anything will say her plot is too small can't you build there and rent it out later on decisions many have not decided to be great many have not decided to be serious you have not decided to make your prayer life a priority do you know something about the human will the anointing of God will always move the direction of your true decisions that when you make up your mind and say from this day forward hallelujah everybody say decisions say actions i want you right now while you are watching me write three things that you will decide upon and you will take immediate action by the spirit and not stop till you see results as god puts it in your heart for some of you is building for some of you, it's your health. For some of you, it's re-engineering your entire life. For some of you, you need to put your ministry or your life in order. Please write it by the Spirit. This is why you came to church. Don't assume, I am a father, but my wife has been the one taking care of the family. It started when I lost my job in 2015. Thank you, sir. With all due respect, the Bible says, any man that cannot take care of his family, that, that time is too long for you to remain in that state. Therefore, make a decision that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will rise to my responsibility as a father. I've been having a pain in my body. I said, I will go to the hospital one day. It's like the pain is increasing. You know? Something is swelling around my stomach. Um, I'm sure one day, maybe miracle service November, I will come. No. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Let's hurry up. Is someone getting a new mindset? So number one mindset is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Number two, your oneness with Christ. Number three, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant. Are you ready for number five? Number five is a very, con is a very consoling orientation that you must have. Challenges are not unusual. And can always be surmounted. Please write. This is the fifth belief system that programs you for victory. Challenges are not unusual at all. And can always be surmounted. Psalm 34, 19. Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of how many? All. 
look at me when you when you face challenges on your path to destiny your path to ministry your path to knowing god do not sit back and pretend as though it was something that was lack of faith there are many times challenges are proof that you are moving forward if you are not driving a car it does not enter any pothole if you are not driving a car you will never face traffic a car that is stagnant and not moving does not have any challenge am i am i am i talking to you yes many of you the challenges that you face on the way is proof that there is motion happening in your life and every time you face challenges rather than pretending around it hiding it and wasting time confront it headlong and be victorious over it jump that hurdle and keep moving okay you started a business and the business crashed you made a mistake and gave your money to 419ers for how long are you going to cry use the money you lost as your school fees in the school of wisdom you see the thing about the school of wisdom is the moment you graduate your school fees is given back to you no matter how much you spend listen i want you to believe what i am telling you anything that comes as a loss while learning convert it to your school fees in the school of wisdom there's no time now i know better now i can learn better let me reposition myself there are people today when you ask them why their lives are like that they will say 1991 i was a pastor this pastor thing you are doing we did it all something rain came and washed our church and then when that happened and robbers came and stole my car and my bible is that why till today 2023 you are not rising is that a valid excuse Whereas in that same journey, there are people when they started, they lost their father, they lost their mother, they lost their loved ones, they lost whatever it is. In the midst of it, they said, I will wear it destiny till I become. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have money to go for the conference, but I must find a way to follow it. Thank God for internet. Please let me meet a friend and plead with him i'm on my way becoming i should have been at a conference i don't have the money can you help me with two thousand naira let me try and get you know materials from that conference and i will listen to that is the the determination listen challenges i repeat are not unusual you are not just because people don't tell you their challenges ah this man is so easy things just happen like that no sir no sir no sir no sir no sir are we together challenges are not unusual the bible says in sec in second corinthians 2 14 please give it to us i hope god is speaking to someone second corinthians 2 14 now thanks be unto god which always causeth us to triumph in Christ is that in your Bible and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place if you had seen us the first time we held crusade the first time when we organized a crusade if they ever told you that this is what this ministry will become you will not imagine it imagine going for a crusade and you do not even have money to pay the place where people will stay you heard the story we hired sound people from kaduna and you can imagine owing and shouting on a crusade ground jesus heals jesus delivers and the people you are owing are well, after you finish all that miracle and you know the thing with people they come and receive and go and leave you the god that sent you and brought you let him vindicate you apostle but i started a church i was so vibrant in my vision i saw a thousand people first service only me and my wife my front my friend continue i encourage you in the lord continue continue provided is god that led you but apostle how have all the money that i spent publicizing is not publicity that brings men it's a track record in the spirit you continue god is giving you a beautiful story you are trying to rob yourself of Pray together with your wife. Let her be the choir director. You are the preacher. If you drop offering, she will count it. Think of how beautiful that story will be when God makes your ministry global. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Challenges are not unusual. 
Apostle God gave me a word that in three months I'm going to build my house. Now it's one year my house was not built. Accept it as a deficiency in your hearing. That was not God. Just see that you are a student in the school of hearing. You are growing. Instead of doing and say, God, but you said this. Don't make a fool of your understanding. Just say, I can hear God better. Forgive yourself for not hearing well and now start hearing well. And, and if you cannot hear well, borrow the ears of those who have through faith and patience have developed hearing that works. You can borrow the ears of others while your own is being trained. Is someone learning? I'm doing something to your mind today. You will leave this place a sign and a wonder. Believe me. Challenges are not unusual. Apostle, do you know you are just speaking about my case? I trekked from home to come here. We have trekked before. This man you are seeing, I trekked. So it is not, um, it, don't, it's not even an affliction. It's just the law of seasons. Don't, it's not an affliction at all. Hallelujah. That's too small to be called an affliction. The devil will not afflict you with that sheep thing. If the devil wants to afflict you, you will bring something that is serious. Trek with honor. Shabako siata. And you are trekking for koinonia. And while you are saying that, you are saying this is a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will trek and sit outside. And one day light from heaven will land on your head. And from that place you will rise to become a champion. And people will see your life and say you are so lucky. Then tell them sit down. Let me tell you how luck works. That one day I trek with no food. Apostle, how about me who has not eaten? It's so sad. God will raise comfort for you. But my friend, do not leave your training because of that. Don't call things problems. Call them challenges. Do you believe what, what I'm saying? Apostle, I was invited for a meeting. I prayed and fasted. When I got there, I even forgot the anchor scripture. And I preached all kinds of things. Nobody was looking at. I mean, while they were looking at me, I thought I did something wrong. I didn't know that I was not making sense. I was just my sermons. I was preaching. The goal was to preach on faith. I ended up preaching on something else. Don't worry. Make your mistakes with honor. That will become your testimony. It's a ladder you are rising upon. Hallelujah. Run away from people who never met challenges on their path to greatness. You are standing before a risk, a big risk. Challenges qualify people to be able to mentor and raise others. We teach people from pain, not just victory. Victory is what brings people, but pain is what... Let no man trouble me. Is it not in your Bible? For I bear in my body. Before you listen to people, tell them, show me your scars. A testament of endurance. A testament... Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything right? Till today with what I know, I know I did everything right. It was just not the season for manifestation nothing there was nothing wrong as far as i know sincerely so you are saying apostle i've done everything right everything you are saying is what i'm doing my brother continue if the cloud be full of rain they empty themselves continue the giving man of god keep praying keep praying apostle but should i start ministry because there's the pressure even though the voice of god has not come stay there and remain the ones i've trained i've started ministry you stay there the blueprint of your destiny is not the same but the day his voice comes it will come with majesty and it will lift you and compensate you for your obedience you believe that shout aloud amen, amen. Hmm. number six <laughs> Are you ready? Belief system number six. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. The sixth mindset you must have. This world, write it down please, is a world of men. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. If you do not sustain this mindset, respectfully speaking, you will fail in patterns. This world is a world of men. Therefore, 
advancement is based on relationships psalm 115 and verse 6 let's hurry up psalm 116 and 15 and verse 6 verse 16 i meant to say psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the lord's read with me the remaining part please but the earth has he given to the children of men one more time but the earth has he given to the children of men the earth as far as the activities within the cosmos is concerned i have told you destiny actualization is men dependent not only god dependent when you are functioning in the realm of the spirit you do not need men but ladies and gentlemen please hear me you want to walk in victory you must understand the dynamics of relationships as far as actualizing destiny is concerned this was a tragedy of the man at the pool of bethesda john 5 6 and 7. jesus comes to the man and he saw him there and knowing he had been there a long time said unto him will thou be made whole hear the man's reply seven the impotent man answered and said i have no man in other words i did not invest in relationships it is not because the water cannot heal it says when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while i am coming another who has relationships will step in before me relationships are very powerful this world is a world of men it's a revelation that when i caught changed my life when i pray to god i also pray to him to touch men listen to me ladies and gentlemen the house that you are trusting god for is not in heaven it's in the earth the keys are in somebody's hand right now. The job that you are trusting God for, the assignment of God as the father of spirits is to manipulate the hearts of men to be ready to work his purposes in your life. Your assignment is to use the wisdom of relationships to connect. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationship, plants and animals. When I, I, I was doing a study some time ago, when you study... Um, microbiology and I believe even biochemistry you see the way a, a single cell begins to break itself in rapid succession until it becomes a full-grown human it's a miracle a, a marvelous miracle that means when you are rejecting that little cell you are rejecting a human being are we together now this is how it is a line watch this now a line is simply a connection between two points mathematics and uh, geometry teaches us am i right you cannot call a point a line for you to have a line you must have two points any point at all and then you connect them so what you call a line is simply two points agreeing to be together that's what you call a line you alone will never be able to make any progress but in connection to someone else and if you do not know how to respond to that someone else you can miss destiny if jesus did not know how to connect to john the baptist he would have missed destiny if jesus did not know how to connect to the disciples he would have missed the continuation of the gospel after his ascension relationships are very important belief system number six this world is a world of men and therefore advancement of any sort is based on relationships we're almost there let me give you seven please go back and study this i have handed to someone in this service the keys to the prayers that you have been praying lord why is my life like this are you ready for for number seven who you become as you walk with god please write who you become as you walk with god is by far greater than what you acquire who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means your transformation is greater than your acquisition who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means when you probe the great their, their greatest sense of worth comes from who they have become 
not what they have acquired when you begin to acquire things chances are excellent that your mind shifts from your transformation to enjoy the things that you have cars houses and all kinds of privileges but as you walk the school of the wise and as you walk the path of victory the victor's path you will know that who you become is more important than what you acquire on the way what you acquire can come and go but who you become remains with you forever the seventh mindset that you must have your becoming is greater than your doing greater than your having most people are interested in having before becoming they want to be billionaires they want to be anointed men and women but they are interested in the anointing not god are you seeing that now i hope you know that interest in the anointing minus god is idolatry your faith and your desire is on the oil, not the relationship. Who you become is greater than what you acquire. Many years ago, I studied this and it did not make sense to me. How will you tell me who I am becoming is greater than what I have? Listen to me. Every time you have something that does not match your becoming, it will leave your life. I promise you. It will live your life. It is a law. That is the reason why you find out that people can inherit physical estates or inherit physical things that is inconsistent with their transformation. Eventually, they will lose it through a series of inexplainable events. Who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire. What you acquire on the way, what you acquire from God is greater is of lesser value than who you become can i give you number eight write this down everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose everything in your life this is the mentality of the victor everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose everything in your life only becomes truly valuable when it is connected to purpose please write and look up let me explain that and then i give you the last i hope god has spoken to you today that means nothing in itself is truly valuable it is only valuable to you relative to your perception eventually you will find out that what you admired and were happy about will no longer interest you what makes things indefinitely valuable is their ability to serve purpose not the things themselves for instance your certificate remember the first day you collected it you were jumping up and down now you've not seen it for years you don't even know where it is honestly and quite honestly many do not care do you know why because until it is connected to purpose in itself it will not profit you another example strangely so is the car that you buy you can buy that car imagine you buy a car you cannot drive and there's nobody to drive you eventually what was a blessing will annoy you because it is not serving purpose the the goal of that car is that it's able to move you to help you achieve your goals but imagine with me that you buy a car for instance and someone puts it uh, you know to to the drive uber or bolt with it for you and something is coming with it and you are using it to pay the school fees of your children you see that that car becomes valuable because it is helping you serve a bigger purpose every time you come to god and say give me the question you hear from heaven is for what give me power reply for what let me make a name for myself make reference to Genesis 11 I don't waste that kind of thing God will tell you I don't waste time on purposeless things Nimrod Kush said let us build a city and make a name for ourselves and God said that is not it Lord give me wisdom and understanding heart Solomon for what I am young and you have given me leadership over a great people who but you is able to lead them give me an understanding heart that I may lead them and guide them in discretion and God said you qualified I will not only give you an understanding heart I will give you riches wealth and honor like no one has had listen to me 
everything you have in your life that cannot be connected to purpose will not only frustrate you but can be used as a tool by the devil to destroy you even if it is God that gave you beauty without purpose can be converted to a tool of destruction for both you and others intellect without there's what we call evil genius is that true people who God gave intelligence but because it was not connected to divine purpose can be used by the devil for your destruction you watch how Satan used things that God gave men to destroy them. Samson was given an unusual ability to be strong, but he thought it was just strength. He did not know what that strength was supposed to be for. It was supposed to be that by his strength, he would become a judge over Israel. Everybody say purpose. One more time. Can I tell you, listen, ladies and gentlemen, most people do not know the importance of purpose. They just come and they say, well, I just want money. And you keep acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring. Then you make the mistake of the rich fool. You now build banks. In this case, a bank account. Start them and say, my soul, find rest. And all of a sudden, they diagnose, respectfully speaking, that there is some sickness somewhere. And you find out that money cannot attend to it again. And they say the man has two weeks to leave. And now there are billions stacked there. He hid it from his wife, hid it from his children, hid it from himself, did not spend it. The kingdom was not blessed by it. It was kept there. Wealth without purpose. Make up your mind today that everything God gives you, you are going to connect it to divine purpose. Lord, why did you give me this lovely voice? There are many of you who are singing here, who when you hear the worship team sing, you smile because something, there is a connection. God gave you a wonderful voice. You should be singing his praises to the nations, but you are there just wondering, I'm sure God one day, my own is that I want to marry. That's my own. And God is saying, for what? <laughs> you see, I said marriage and I'm seeing people smile. <laughs> and now you are using God as a ladder to quickly get married. At least let me come to church. I know that in church, who knows what God can do? <laughs> are we together? All my own is to get, I just want a job. That's my own. I want to move from this one room to a three bedroom flat. Why? All my friends are living in duplexes and God says nonsense. That's too small a reason. You can fast from the lens of that lost. You will not get the hand of God. Let me tell you something. One secret to answer prayer is connect your desires to divine purpose. Let me repeat. Connect your desires to divine purpose. Lord, give me a husband. Give me a wife. You are not speaking his language. For what? Are we together? Lord, give me money. I want money. And you are shouting for five minutes. All God is hearing is money. Money is saying, calm down. This thing is the lost. It's, it's lost. It's not prayer. What do you want the money for? Lord, I've suffered. Are you not seeing? Mm -mm. I've suffered is not an answer. I can raise somebody to help you, but money will not touch your hand. When you have a need, he will give you. Will you agree? No, I want it in my hands. And God says, for what? But now watch this. As funny as this is, I hope you are learning. Father, I have learned by revelation and through the ministry of the teaching priest that financial resources are important for my living a comfortable life, important for participating in your kingdom advance agenda. Lord, I am available. That one prayer, I can tell you, expect a reply. Kingdom driven prayers are the kinds of prayers that receive answers. Lost driven prayers is simply carnality using spirituality to meet its need. Hallelujah. We pray competitive prayers. Lord, you have given this person, this lady that came when, when. Now I'm here. Oh. Mm -mm. It's amazing. You just listen to the prayer of Christians, especially when they're alone. And you just be God yourself and be listening. Imagine that that prayer is coming to your throne. And just hear what the people are saying. And then at the end, we end it with, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. His name is mighty, no doubt. But that thing you have said needs editing. 
Father, I'm tired of not being anointed. The other day, I said, let the power of God will move now. And nobody fell. And God says, what for? What exactly? What does the falling do to you? It's because people are not falling that they are not inviting me. I have, I, by now, my life would have been... Everything in life is only truly valuable when it is connected to purpose. In John 18 and verse 37, John 18, 37, give it to us please. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end, did you see it now? To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, Jesus said, I do not have any personal agenda on my own. I am here to bear witness to the truth. I am here to bear witness to the truth. For as long as John the Baptist was walking in purpose, nobody could kill him. When the assignment was done, he said himself that I may decrease that he might increase he now went into doing things that were not connected to purpose and it landed him in prison offense multiplied his tragedy and he was beheaded not a wise way for someone who had worked with god everything i desire in my life i always ask my question i ask this question and and from the depth of my heart how does this that i want serve the purposes of the kingdom i'm giving you a very superior spiritual orientation it is not that god cannot lift you father give me a global ministry the question is for what lord raise me like esther bring a hazardous to come and marry me it's not that god cannot bring a hazardous but for what I just want the joy of being queen and God said ask Vashti that's exactly how she was thinking and that's why she left the palace but I realized that the salvation of the Jews from her man and all those who are the enemies of God's process is depending on me therefore take me to the palace with speed God will take you there believe what I'm telling you you find people's prayer answered to the degree to which it is connected to kingdom lost driven prayer whether in secret or in the open will always end you in destruction competitive prayer that one you just console yourself that you are praying you know our idea of winning on earth is that only one person must win because that is how we have been educated to believe winning so you outshine to win but in the kingdom, all can be winners because winning is with respect to the will of God, not with respect to who you rise above. In our secular academic program, you are only called a winner when you bring others down and you stand alone. But in the kingdom, you are not a winner when you bring others down. You are a winner to the degree to which your life fulfills the will and the purposes of God. Is someone learning? Now, let me give you the last. And we'll wrap up for today the last is a very major point a major mind construct idea mind construct idea listen carefully everything in your life okay verse okay number nine now the only real assets you have are God your peace and your fulfillment please write the only real assets that you have in this life are God, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset it is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint from the standpoint of the spirit eternity and destiny in fact your only real assets the only real assets you have i repeat are number one your relationship with god number two your peace number three your fulfillment what is fulfillment make reference to my teaching what seekest thou i define fulfillment 
as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity that is God's idea of fulfillment I take number nine again the only real assets that you have are your relationship with God your peace and your fulfillment Jeremiah chapter 9 from 23 and 24 let's find something somewhere to pray now thus said the Lord let not the wise man koinonia please listen let not the wise man glory in his wisdom neither let the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glory glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the real asset of the believer is the wealth of your knowing God John 17 and verse 3 this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent your real asset is your relationship with Jesus John 14 27 John 14 27 peace shalom I live with you my peace give I unto you not as the world giveth give I to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid please look at me no matter what you have in this life and no matter your level of achievement and accomplishment ask anybody who has lived long enough upon this earth does not matter what field and frankly speaking does not even matter whether he's a christian or not you just meet someone who has experienced the blessing of longevity and ask them what things from your experience among the many things you feel are really valuable they will tell you peace the highest definition of success for me is peace beyond progress peace when people die you never say rest in progress you never say rest in investments you never say rest on top of your assets you say rest in peace so peace is a gift that even a dying man can go with nobody can carry his land out of the earth nobody can carry his certificate out of the earth nobody can carry you cannot carry your office out of the earth no matter how beautiful how handsome a few hours after death and the person is disshaped in a way beyond recognition days after decay sets in and that's the end of it all that is left after a long time is the skeletal frame of that person all the beauty and all the glamour fades literally from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return but let me tell you three things that you can take out of this life you cannot take land therefore don't let land replace your relationship with god don't let land re replace your peace and your fulfillment all these three things i am mentioning you can take them out of this earth number one your relationship with jesus can be transported beyond this realm that will be the basis of your being with him when all is said and done number two is your peace can I tell you if you even live without peace it already suggests to you where you are going to am I right on that yes sir because Jesus is called the Prince of Peace there are people who do not care whether they have peace listen I say this as I wrap up and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility I have met very wealthy people who have lost peace for money they traded peace for money medical doctors here will tell you there are people who have a lot of money estates I'm, and i'm not against prosperity but they cannot find peace there are men of god respectfully speaking they are so obsessed about advancement in ministry that they lose their peace there are many who are so obsessed about their reputation they would rather their peace go away and preserve their reputation no in order of priority the greatest assets you will truly have in your life this is the mentality of the victor your relationship with Jesus your peace and your fulfillment I have had the honor of praying for people some of them minutes before their transition and I have seen people laugh as they leave you know how people will say ah, I'm going mm -mm. they were not even desirous of prayer because all has been put in place they put everything in place 
their will they lived useful lives some of them have had the honor of having their children around them one of my dear pastor friends in kenya i think one time when his father was about transiting in glory i had the honor of seeing the father lovely family that man even in his old age and in his health state he still went to church and when it was his final moments the family members gathered around him like this what a beautiful way to transit gathered they sang hymns they sang songs they did everything and then the wife went into the kitchen their mother and when she came out he smiled at her one last time and transited to heaven versus hold on let me paint another picture versus the person who sits down you've cheated people you've lived a wicked life you refuse to receive jesus as your lord and savior downplayed everything spirituality spent your life looking for money spent your life making ends meet and finally you are told you are about to go i present to you two people two people at the end of their lives there are people today there are all kinds of arguments about their properties arguments about their estates they've gone they've long gone long gone long gone if jesus comes and meets us while working then hallelujah to him we transit in glory and grace but if he stays long enough for us to finish our assignment and we enjoy length of days because I hope you know the purpose of long life is not fear of death. Hey, look at me. I hope you know that the purpose of long life is not fear of death. I hope you are not offended. The purpose of long life is not fear of death. If you are afraid of death, what you need is Jesus, not long life. <laughs> you will not die, don't worry. Am I not the one who speaks over you? You will not die but the purpose of long life hear me the purpose of long life is not to manage the fear of death that's not a wise way to live it's not a victorious way to live did the bible not say for for me to live is christ and he caused death gain is it not profit that made you go for business <laughs> and now he says there is another kind of profit when you transit are we together most people cannot talk about death as I'm saying like this. Oh, oh, Apostle, you are talking like this. Are you? I'm not going anywhere. Look, you don't know, you don't know my agreement with God. Don't, don't listen. Me and God, we are not stupid people. I'm not serving God for nothing. So when I talk like this, it is my priestly duty to you. Don't think these are some finals. You will see me next week, next year. I'm, I'm here. Um, listen, I'm only teaching you the mentality of the victor. Are we together? If you cannot talk like this, when I make the altar call, come and stand here. Because that, listen, listen, it's a very, if you do not have the confidence, if you fear death so much, it's because you do not know Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Not to be on a journey going, to be present with him. What then is the excellency of saying it is finished? That way you can, you can smile at life. Listen, for all those who are elderly here and are listening, the truth is if Christ tarries all of us, that queue, we're going to join it and transit. So let me advise every person here. I hate to be, I'm not bringing bad news, but let me advise every elderly person. Elderly here means what, what age do we put elderly? Let's say from 60 and above sincerely do not fear death take the time you have to prepare your life with honor that if christ tarries you can transit with joy that i have raised children that love the lord i have spent my life serving the purposes of god and even if it is one year left do it with honor let the nobility of that one year swallow up the remaining years of wastage if you cannot pray you can give if you cannot give you can send men there are people as they die they remember the buses they provided for people to come to church they remembered televisions that they set up for people to hear the gospel it is the reason why many of us are rejoicing why we are serving god because if i die today you've heard me say it is only that i did not finish my assignment but that is i'm just giving you an an a reason I'm saying if i die today that may be my only challenge but i'm still alive through the teachings 
that go spread across lives. Look at men like Reinhard Bonke. I was listening to one of his teachings a few days ago. And I said, my God, men who, though they are dead, they are still alive. My, my eternal mentor, Dr. Miles Munro, long dead, but he's still alive. Today we have become extensions of his legacy. When God raised him, he saw us in him. Quit that life of fear and that makes you live a mediocre life. Spend your life doing the things that matter to be victorious for the kingdom. I present to you the mentality of a victor. You cannot have this mindset and be defeated in life. You cannot have this series of mindsets. I do not believe that is all you need to learn. But I tell you, this is a rich capture. This has come from the study of scripture. This has come, respectfully speaking, from listening to people who have made marks in the sands of time, in ministry, in business, in life. You walk this path and watch the beauty and glory that emanates from your life. My call for you, therefore, is not just to sit down and say, I had a wonderful service, but to go back, be a student of scripture, match these things against your life i'm 20 years now i'm 30 years now i'm 40 years now i'm 50 years now i'm 80 years now i'm 90 years now it does not matter the unit of destiny is time and the wise know that you can waste time you can spend time and you can invest in time hallelujah have you been blessed tonight this is my mentality Believe me when I tell you, when I wake up in the morning, this is it. When I say I can never be a failure, it is not a blind Pentecostal confession. I have surrounded my life with these thoughts. They continue to grow in me perpetually. You have this mentality. Listen to this message again. Get these principles. Write them. Listen to them. Pray them. Believe them. Develop on them. And return back a few months a few weeks a few years and say apostle thank you for not hiding this truth thank God I came for koinonia today I have shown you the roadmap out of a life of mediocrity I've shown you the roadmap out of a life of you do business without this mindset it will lead to failure get a job without this mindset it will lead to failure do ministry without this mindset it will lead to failure run a family without this mindset it will lead to failure but don't do any other thing and get this mindset. It will force you into an action that will turn you into a victor. Please rise up on your feet. Can you hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can? I just want us to pray one prayer. Hold hands with someone and thank the Lord for what you just heard. Begin to say, thank you, Jesus. He says, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. The way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Go ahead and pray. Those of you who are watching from your homes, connecting by way of the internet. Are you connecting with someone to pray? The mentality of the victor. A victor in Christ is beyond just saying, receive it. Is beyond just saying take it as wonderful as that is is beyond just confession it is a victor's mentality go ahead and pray someone pray apostle i've wasted a major part of my life no more I'm making a decision. I see that the area I've missed is the area of decisions. Everyone pray. One last time, I'll run through the list. Nine of them. Number one, the belief systems for victory. Keep praying. An understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Number two, the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Number three, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny will remain stagnant. Number five, that challenges 
in whatever form they come are not unusual and they can always and should always be surmounted number six that this world is a world of men therefore advancement of any kind is based on relationships first your relationship with God then your relationship with strategic men alliances number seven that who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire who you become as you emerge in life who you become as you learn God is by far greater than what you acquire number eight everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose nothing in itself blesses you by default it only blesses you indefinitely when it is connected to purpose wealth connected to purpose becomes value intellect intelligence connected to purpose becomes valuable and then number nine which is final for this our time together tonight is that the only real assets that you will have at the end of your life are number one your relationship with God number two your peace number three your sense of fulfillment every other thing is transient every other thing from an eternal perspective is mundane you cannot transport them out of the earth every physical thing that you hold valuable today is only as important to the degree to which it serves a divine purpose go ahead and thank God for all you have heard blessed are my ears for they hear blessed are my eyes for they have seen blessed is my heart for it now understands the ways of God by these truths may my life command victory from an eternal standpoint and then victory even upon the earth for in Jesus much less name we have prayed for in Jesus much less name we have prayed Amen. hallelujah there are many people who at the end of their lives indeed they will say I lived a, a defeated life why because they never have a chance to be taught this is not something you guess this is not something you invent a few people had the opportunity to learn pieces of these truths and they commanded certain levels of results now you have an, a, 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 the privilege given by God to hear a very rich capture of these belief systems. The responsibility now is over to you to go back and war with it. If I were you, I would wake up in the night, even this night, and pray these things. Look at my note. Listen to the message again. Give my children. Are we together? Give my wife, give my husband, give my relatives, everybody around your life, listen to it. Take it and give some of your business partners. Instead of arguing in bitterness about mundane things, these are destiny defining belief systems. You focus on this and you will turn back and not find Satan again. Because you are engaging these truths. You weary the devil when you bury yourself learning these truths. Every single one of them is word based. You can be sure that there is eternity connected to them. They will not lead you to perdition. They will not lead you to defeat. This ministry you see by the privilege of God's grace. Making the impact that it is making across the globe. Is on the strength of these belief systems. These are the foundational beliefs that have constructed my understanding. They evolved me from my lowly estate. To what I have become and what I am becoming. Hallelujah. Can I speak over your life? In the name of Jesus. Father I have taught your people like you have put in my spirit. I pray that the doing grace. The grace that makes them to take advantage of this truth and act upon it until they emerge victorious. Let that grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every faulty belief system you may have sustained that has been responsible for poverty, failure, sickness, defeat, anger, all kinds of health issues. In the name of Jesus, by this prophetic declaration, I declare, let there be a transition in your mind. 
the salvation that has only found expression in your spirit and has not yet flown into your mind transiting you to a superior believer may that transition begin from tonight as a man of God go and prosper as a business person go and prosper as a career person go and prosper as a family person go and prosper your days will be filled with victory your days will be filled with prosperity and hear me every weapon of darkness that has followed you until now programming failure and exhaustion and defeat I decree and declare you are delivered now and forever for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed let me give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus tonight what a night to make it right every service we make the altar call but I believe this is a very special time listen remember I told you the assets number nine that the real asset you have in your life is your relationship with Jesus your peace and your fulfillment all three only come from Jesus you cannot have the life of God without him you cannot have true peace without him and you cannot have fulfillment without him you're here and you are saying apostle I truly want to make it right with Jesus tonight wherever you are I'm only asking for one genuine person and for someone who is saying I I have given my heart to Jesus before but I want to clarify things I that, that if for any reason he calls me today let it be that it is heaven I'm going to let it be that it's with him I will be for the rest of my life wherever you are I'm going to count one to five please leave your seat and come and stand here one God bless you celebrate them as they're coming convicted by the Spirit it's a new season for you come God bless you God bless you it's a new season come 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 you can make it right once and for all you can begin to live a life of purpose a life of grace a life without fear whatsoever knowing that in this life and even in eternity you have had peace with God Koinoni are you celebrating them <laughs> hallelujah Thank you so much. All of you who are in the overflows, you can move to your projector screens. And then those who are following from across the globe, I like you to be prepared to pray as I pray this prayer and do well to let the media, the public relations department know. Follow the links that you find there and then they'll give you a chance to let us know that you've made a decision for Jesus. Thank you so much for those of you who have come. This is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. And I salute you for coming to make it right with Jesus and for some of you to rededicate your life. This is why he has sent us. May I please request as a sign of surrender that you lift your right hand to Jesus and say this after me say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my king I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you so much for your precious people they have taken a bold step of faith they have decided to make it right with you and the word of God declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing these ones to yourself. I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. I commend you to the word of the Lord. And I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. And I rebuke everything that is not of God, every foul spirit that has oppressed you until now, be delivered once and for all. Because you have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. 
in Jesus mighty name I pray amen and amen thank you please may I request that you follow our counselors they are wonderful people ready to have a quick word with you and pray with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go is this the best you can do koinonia celebrate them hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord now let me just one quick announcement before we leave i want to encourage you all through this month of july there are very destiny provoking teachings that the lord has placed upon my heart these are teachings that connect directly to life and destiny it is profound wisdom that is going to be coming to us hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.